Oh, hello. In today's video, I want to give you my tournament report uh, from Kill Team Critical Strike 3, the Wild World tournament that I attended last weekend. It's taken me a little while to get around to making this video because I've been away and because we've had all the Kill Team news to go through. But here we are, tournament report. Let's give you an event over overview. So it was a weekend long Kill Team event. Six rounds, three on each day, which is a, a vast, vast improvement, at least for me, uh, from compared to that time when they ran it where it was four and then two. Much preferred it three and three. Great job, guys. A mixture of season one and Into the Dark. Interesting that even the flagship store of the company doesn't run better Decima at its official events. Using the now ubiquitous Turning Point Tactics map pack. Uh, Warhammer World is, you know, it's a fantastic environment, especially if you're going to your first tournament or something. It, having staff there who are actually, like, they're paid to be there and make it a good and welcoming environment is always amazing. Um, there's so much space, it's light and airy, um, you know, it, it is a really, really good environment to play in. Um, you know, I, I recommend it highly to everybody, even if you are in no way a competitive player. If you enjoy playing Kill Team, um, you'll have a great day out. If you go to a Warhammer World tournament, I thoroughly recommend it. And once again, each table had a board set up from, I've said each season, this is an old slide, from Season 1 and from Into the Dark. Uh, so everybody could have three games on each. So this is the one, it's always the one thing, right? The one thing that I, I criticise the Not Kill Team guys for their their tournaments is sometimes you can end up playing loads of Into the Dark or loads of Open, so... That's a really nice thing about Warhammer World because they're the company and because they can just go and get the Into the Dark Terrain right from their own factory and put it and like this is for events as a cost center, internal billing magic, right? But no one's actually having to go and pay for it with real money, so that's always good. Anyway, before we get into the games, I've got some preamble to do. So I want to talk about Friday. I'm on my summer holidays. Uh, my, my wife doesn't work, so um, and my good friend uh, a Robber Ross from the Discord had uh, booked the day off work. So we were able to spend a good portion of Friday in, in Nottingham. We travelled down together. They played a practice game in Warhammer World, which you can see on the screen here, uh, on some Age of Sigmar terrain. Warhammer World was pretty busy. Um, lots of tables were booked. We couldn't get a 40k table, so we had to make do with an Age of Sigmar table. Like... <laughs> You can't turn up at Warhammer World and play a game of Kill Team on a random day on the random open gaming tables and have it set up to be a um, like a proper game of Kill Team on a proper Kill Team map. It's just nothing, right? They don't have the terrain that they have out at the tournaments. They don't have that out just in the gaming hall for people to use. It's like a separate department almost. So just do better that in mind if you're traveling. We had some lunch in Bugman's. And then we actually drove off to Sanctuary Gaming in the evening, which is about a 45-minute drive away. That's where the Knots Kill Team tournaments usually are. And I'd sort of been nebulously invited, like, ages ago by Jason. He was like, oh, and if you're ever at Nottingham, you know, on Friday, drop um, Sanctuary, we open at 5 and we play Kill Team. So I thought, well, we couldn't get a table at Warhammer World. And we were staring down, like, many, many hours of sitting in a random pub next to the Travel Lodge. So we thought we'd go down to there. It was pretty deserted. Um, you know, I actually thought all the Knots Kill Team guys would be in, like, madly practicing for the tournament of the weekend. But I guess if your wife doesn't also play Kill Team, maybe you have to spend some time at home to, like, build up the social credit before you spend the whole weekend away playing with toy soldiers. But luckily for me, right, kids were at grandma's in Stockport. And so I was there with my lady wife, so I could spend the whole of Friday, the whole of Saturday, and the whole of Sunday just in a blissful state of thinking about Kill Team. So, even though there weren't that many people there, the tables were all set out, the staff at Sanctuary really good. Um, they wouldn't even let me pay £5 to use a table, because the first time you come is supposed to be free. Even though I explained that we're out of town and probably wouldn't be back for a very long time, they still wouldn't take my money. But we bought plenty of drinks um, and food and stuff there, so... Tried to make it up to them that way. Um, and they had like four or five tables laid out with, with tournament specified, you know, turning point tactics, map packs and things. So I was able to get a practice game in against Mrs. T.I. And we had some dinner at the neighbouring Witherspoons, which is, I mean, everyone knows what, knows what Witherspoons is, but we're able to get like 
three dinners and three drinks for like £28. So that was pretty good. Um, I promise we'll get to the game soon, but it wouldn't be a Mr. T.I. tournament report if we didn't talk about food. So, the included lunches... So the way this works, if you've never been to one of these before, at a weekend tournament you get lunch included on Saturday and Sunday. But it's not from the Bugman's menu... It's in the staff canteen, um, and there's usually like two or three options. And the food was pretty good. Like I had beef lasagna on Saturday and a barbecue meatloaf on Sunday. Both of them very enjoyable. Like, I think the food... There was that one blip where they did the weird wraps with loads of rice and plain chicken in. But since then, the food in the staff canteen has been really good. They've also changed the menu in Bugman's again. It's weird. So I'll just give you a a quick overview of what we did. So, uh, on the Friday... Um, what I will say, I don't want to labour the point, but, um, because I'm a Roman Catholic, I try and avoid eating meat on Fridays. And while there's quite a few, um, vegetarian, like, options on here, if you're, I'm not keen on the vegan meat stuff. They call it moving mountains in, in Warhol world. I don't know if that's a reference to, um, something in the high elf law, right? But if you're looking for something vegetarian or meat-free or, or fishy, like the only fish on the menu is um, the fish finger sandwich. And I feel like fish and chips should be on the menu of any... I know it's not quite a pub. I just feel like fish and chips should be on the menu of every kind of pub-like establishment in the UK, just as a general... But anyway, for lunch we went for the loaded nachos, which were pretty pretty nice. Kind of weird to have, like it's nachos, nacho cheese, jalapenos, pickled onions... Guacamole, sour cream. Weird to have no salsa on there, but what you can do. Um, and then on the um, on the Saturday for my dinner, I did the Fire Slayer Hot Wings Challenge. Because look at it, it's there, right? So prove yourself worthy of the Fire Slayer title by taking on this hellish challenge. Um, demonic habanero hot sauce devised by the alchemists from Sauce Shop to claim the glory. Succeed and you get a pin badge, and you can see I did succeed because here's my pin badge. Okay, uh, nine and it's cute, right? Because it's nine ninety five for the Fire Slayer challenge. All our other hot wings, um, bone in wings topped with your choice of buffalo hot sauce, blue cheese, Bowman's barbecue, or sticky sriracha and spring onions, eight ninety five. You're paying a pound for the chance to win a badge if you finish your food, right? But you know. I wanted the badge. And to be fair, if they were selling that as a piece of merch, they'd be selling it for more than a pound. So, what are you going to do? I would say the wings were hotter than I would choose to eat for pleasure. Um, But not that bad. Right? Uh, You know, not that bad. Uh, I think the wings themselves, like the actual chicken, cooked really well. Um, You know, um, I... yeah, seasoned and cooked really well to how I like chicken wings. It was really good. And then obviously slathered in the sauce, which was, you know, pretty spicy. Um, so I had them, and then to go along with them, I had some uh, onion rings and some coleslaw, because that seemed like a good idea. Coleslaw, disappointing. House slaw, just tasted like coleslaw out of a packet, to be perfectly honest. Didn't taste particularly homemade or artisanal. Tasted like catering coleslaw. Um... Onion rings were good, you know, obviously prepared in the kitchen and, and fried on the fryer, not from packet, so that was good. Um, so yeah, there's your rundown of the uh, the Bugman's menu. Oh, and for breakfast, sorry, on both days, I had the breakfast burger, which was frankly delicious. Um, you know, really, really good. So, yeah, there's your rundown of the food options that I uh, partook of at um, Bugman's. I wouldn't get them again, now I've got the badge, like they weren't... Like, I wouldn't choose... Then again, I'd rarely choose chicken wings on a menu just for something to eat. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on to the actual games, the bit you're here for. We've talked for nearly ten minutes about nothing. Cool. Um, Round one, uh, I was playing against a guy called Justin Ritchie. We were on uh, Killzone Nackmund, and we were playing Loot. Justin was playing Legionaries. Now, Justin was a new player to Kill Team. Uh, He actually told me this was his third game. So I did win 20 to 8. Um, I tried to be helpful, right? And I tried to kind of explain things to him. Justin didn't even have, like, 
to the point where he didn't have the Tac Ops deck. He had the original Tac Ops deck that came with Octarius. And so I had to be like, oh no, you can't. That's not the Tac Ops we're using. Um, and so I actually had to track down. Like, I asked one of the Warhammer World staff, Ed, that I'm quite friendly with, like, have you got any spare Tac Ops decks? Because my opponent's not brought, right? And full credit to Warhammer World. They lent him a Tac Ops deck, even though in the pack, it's like, you've got to have your Tac Ops deck or you, like, can't play, right? They went and lent him a deck so he could play the game, so that's fantastic. Um, yeah, you know, I think even if he'd been a pretty experienced player, like, Night Lords really are just a better version of Legionaries in a lot of ways. Like, Legionaries have some things going for them, like they have the... The the the, the, the Psyker that can do the blast damage and they can arguably better than Night Lords against like bigger teams. But playing against each other, it's a it is a, always going to be a bit of a struggle for the legendary player to do really really well. So yeah, I tried to teach him some stuff and I'm pleased to say he went on to win and draw uh, a game. So that was good. Um, but yeah, I did I did kind of do really well. Now I was really worried because uh, obviously you go to a tournament. You draw someone that's comparatively new in your first round, you get a really high score, and then you end up playing into somebody in round two who's really very good, and you get kind of crushed into the floor. So that was my big worry going into round two. So round two, I drew Jonathan Solly. Uh, so John uh, is one of the members of Not Kill Team. Really lovely bloke. Like they, I don't know what it is. They all are. Um, it... <laughs> Legitimately, it's not unreasonable to say if you are uh, playing in a kill team tournament and the fellow that sits down next to you has one of those not to kill team t shirts on, you're going to be in for a really pleasant game. They're all really good. You might get hammered into the ground, but you're in for a pleasant game against somebody that wants the game to be enjoyable for both parties, right? So that was really that was really cool. Uh, Jonathan was playing Hyrotech Circle, uh, and they're an absolutely lovely Slaneshi Chaos Space Marine themed uh, Hyrotech Circle kill team. They were absolutely, I'm going to show a picture of them on the next uh, slide. Absolutely amazing, though. We had a very, very fun game, but both of us had some really, really atrocious roles. Like, really, really bad roles. Um, but it was fun because it was spread about. Like, we both rolled really, really, really poorly. The big thing that I learned from this game was not to take Headhunter into higher attack. Um, yeah, should, if, if I'd not done that, if I'd taken something else like Dreadtail Dark Rumor, I could have even won this game, potentially, or Drew, because he only beat me by one point. Um, and yeah, you just can't... Trying to get that Crypt deck pinned down when it can move so far is so, so difficult. Uh, but no, it was a great game. Um, I did feel a little bit unfamiliar with Into the Dark. Like, like I said before in these videos, me and Zim don't really play Into the Dark. I'm nothing against the former. It's just a faff to set it up. Right? It's just a faff to set it up. And it, I do enjoy it. I like the format. Mrs. T.I. doesn't. She hates it. Right? Which is another reason I don't play it very often. But even me and Zim, I've got nothing against it. But like, it's just... A faff to set up. So I wasn't like if you play a lot of Into the Dark, you go great. Well, it's number four bridge. You've got this big central room, and you kind of know in your head how playing in that room is going to go and where and where you want to stand and things like that, right? And 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 Into the Dark always kind of wrongs foots me because there's things like you know you can't charge through a door. Um, and he was very clever, and he, he obviously he knew what he was doing in a sense of he would place guys an inch away from the barricade so he could see there weren't going to be charges happening in turn two either. And he was a very very skilled player, very very good. I think I played really really well to get him to seventeen to eighteen. And actually, a lot of his uh, compatriots in Not Kill Team were like, "Oh, how did you do in round two? I was like, "Oh, well, I lost to to John by one point." And I'm like. Oh, He's really good, though. You should be really proud of yourself. I don't know if they're just gassing me up, because I could be a bit miserable sometimes on these uh, uh, tournament reports when I do really badly. Not miserable, but a little bit like, oh, I'm just not very good at kill team. But they were like, like about four different people from that club were like, oh, but John's really good. Sonny's really good. What's going on? Um, so, yeah, that was fun. Great game. And I, I promised I'd show his team. Like, I, like, when they had the painting competition at lunchtime, which was after round one, 
it was a, you had to vote for two, and it was a matter of opinion among everyone I talked to, like what the second choice was going to be. But everybody in my group that I travelled with, so that's Oro and my wife, just everybody was voting for Jonathan's kill team as one of their two. His was legitimately a cut above um, all the others. And it's the only time, you know, I've ever... So the way they work it at Warhammer World, you have first, second, and third place for the painting competition in terms of people's votes. And separately, you have uh, the Judges' Choice Award. And it's the first time I've ever seen it happen where the Judges' Choice Award and the uh, People's Choice First Place was the same damn person. It, it, like, look at these wings, man. Look at the, look at the like little bits of freehand on the wings there, like to give it the the texture. And look at this gun. Look at the fades. Look at the look at the look at the dark and the light and the colours. And there's, 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 uh, I, oh, look at this hat, man, and, and, and look how much colour's been pushed into the shadows on this white, like, uh, they're just really good, and I've cropped it off, by the way, because I'm a meanie pants, but this whole background was like this hand-painted thing as well, I mean, just doing that explosion there is pretty amazing, like, Really was a cut above. And then others were all really good. Right? But this one was just... It was really just the creme de la creme of... of It, it really was a cut above. So, yeah. I, <laughs> I can't have enough... I can't keep enough praise on the hobby uh, for this team. I really can't. So, round three. I was playing against a guy called Ethan Elkan. Um... Now, Ethan was playing Death Guard, so I went into it thinking, oh, great, it should be an easy match. Elites into Elites, and he's playing Compendium, um, and I'm playing Night Lords. So on paper, like, if you pay attention to tier lists and people that know what they're talking about, that should have been an easy win for me. But um, Death Guard are so swingy, because you, you you go into them, and then they got these five-up saves, and if the dice are all hot, there's nothing you can do about it. So I was desperately trying to score... Um, like, route, right? And he had a guy, like, it was the guy with the big double axe on a point towards the back. And I had a charge on him, and I charged in. And I took some wounds off him, and they died. And then I went, okay. And I charged in another guy. And I took some wounds off him, and then died. And I charged in, like, a third guy, and still the axe man killed the... And I'm like, just like, because he just would... He just kept rolling this fire. It's like, okay. That's... So, like... Halfway through turning point three, it looked like I was getting an appalling loss. Appalling loss. I had my leader alive at the back on full health, right? And basically everybody else was dead. And then my leader just went, okay, so his activation in turning point three was just, right, okay, so I'm going to plasma pistol this guy and kill him, right? And then in turning point four, it was like, okay, I'm going first, cool, charge, fight, kill a guy, plasma pistol, kill another guy, right, and then positioned him such so that, like, for my opponent to try and get onto, uh, I think it was it was around, like, here, like this, uh, it was it was on this objective three, like, he moved, and I got an overwatch shot, and that must have been in turning point three, and then in turning point four, we just had, yes, so it was the back end of turning point two, when I activated him last and killed a guy, and then he had a the big turning point three where he killed like four guys. And then turning point four, we only had one model left each. And I basically just ran my leader up here. And El Elkin ran his, uh, Ethan, sorry, ran his model down there. Um, and because I was up here, like you can see, I took a picture here. I was able to score, like keep the primaries even. And then I scored Dread Tail and Dark Rumor because I'd run up the board. And that was literally the point that made it into a draw. And it was like, I love that Dread Tail Dark Rumor because the power of your. Your opponent doesn't know you've taken it, especially if their leader is alive. Because if you're otherwise playing from the Seek and Destroy deck, you know, and you've revealed, um, as I usually play, Route and Robin Ransack. So I revealed Route and Robin Ransack, and your opponent knows what's and you've got Unrevealed, and half the time it's going to be Headhunter. And your opponents tend to assume it's Headhunter. And then when it's Dead Tail Dark Room, it's like, oh oh, you've scored one or two points at the end of the game that I hadn't kind of mentally accounted for and mentally mathed out. And that can be quite powerful. So, yeah. Really enjoy 
uh, the Night Lords, actually. That was a really fun game. Ended in a draw, but a really, really fun game. So I ended day one with a win, a loss, and a draw, right? And I was pretty happy because my aim for the whole tournament was to go away with a win, uh, a win and a draw. Like, it was a bit of a joke. Uh, we were sort of fixing... Uh, our goals for the tournament, and, and I was like, "Well, okay, I'm not, not going to say because Oro said or Mrs. T one of them said two wins, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to say two wins. I'm going to say I'll say a win and a draw. So I'd had a win and a draw. I'm like, great. Well, I can lose all three of my games in day two, and um, I'll still have reached like, done my personal goal. So that was fine. So we came into day two. No, no, no stress, no worries. Uh, and it was uh, lock. Uh, so loot on lock. There we go. Versus a guy called Paolo. Now, Paolo was playing Intercession. Uh, and I won 17 to 13, right? And I always think Marines versus Marines on Into the Dark is pretty funny. Because um, you end up in this pretty strange situation where I'm just going to get a pen here, right? You end up with like basically three lanes. So you'll end up with. Um, where are we? We'll end up with a, like a, a blue lane down the bottom here. Right, and then in the middle, uh, we'll call that the green leg, right? And then at the top, uh, we'll, 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 we'll call this the purple lane. Okay. And, um, you know, it was basically my two marines versus his two marines in each of those lanes. And I got to the point where I had a, a fella here, um, the ventriloquoire, I think, and I just... I walked my leader back and reinforced. So I had three models here. And I just let these two points be his, right? I, I just kind of vanquished him on the other side of the board. Um, and it, Into the Dark started to lock into place. And the way you have to play it as Elite started to lock into place. And the way you have to send up the... And it sound, I explained to my wife, and she's like, yeah, duh. And I'm like, yeah, but you never told me that when I was struggling, right? So, it, you know, the way you have to send your Marines in pairs... One of which is a combat guy, and one of which is a shooty guy. So the shooty guy can go through, open a door, and take a shot. And then the combat guy's hopefully got a charge, or the threat of a charge, to come after them. Um, and when that all finally clicked in, and I felt like I had an idea of what was going on, uh, which happened about halfway through this game, I, yeah, finally started to line up in my head, like how you actually play on Into the Dark, so that was good. Round five. Round five was against a guy called Mike Sherwood. Now, Mike Sherwood is also in Not to Kill Team. And we've been sitting, me and Oro have been sitting in Bugman's previously. And Oro have been like, do you reckon that's his real name? Like, what? Like, Nottingham, Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood, Mike Sherwood. Is that really going to be his real name? Um, and I'm like, no, I'm sure it is. And then and Oro's like, why? Well, it could be one. You know, people often play under a pseudonym at tournaments and things. So I did ask him. It is his real name, right? Um, Mike was playing Felgor. Right, and, and somehow I've never, despite them being this big bogeyman of the current meta, and I'm sure I've talked about Felgor and pontificated about Felgor, never actually managed to play into the Felgor Ravagers. So I really am feeling now that the biggest gap I have when it comes to kill team is my lack of understanding of my opponent's teams. Because there are certain teams that I don't play, Mr. T.I. doesn't play, and Zimbabwe doesn't play, and, and Felgor's one of them, right? Which none of us have ever actually painted up and played the Felgor's. Um, so Mike was a lovely and accommodating opponent. He took a lot of time to explain what all his little guys did, and I was quite, it was round five, so I was quite like, thank you, yeah, I appreciate that. And I retained about half of it in my head. Um, and actually, to be fair, though, he was actively like helping me along, like, well... Yeah, but if you do this, you can do this. And if you do this, you can do this. And if you do this, you can do this. And so it was, it was absolute gent. Uh, he got one of my two, ironically, both my sportsmanship votes. One went to Mike Sherwood and one went to Jonathan Zolly, right? Um, uh, and he still won, right? So, funnily enough, my, my votes for best opponents were the people that... Uh, uh, I, the two losses that I took were both the people that I nominated for best opponent. Um, but no, it was, it was a really fun game. And it was close, you know, 16 to 19 is not... I did not feel like I got stomped. So I had good fun um, uh, playing against the Felgal Ravagers there. That was quite cool. Uh, yeah, and I learned a lot. Learned a lot. And then my last game was against a guy called Georgie, Georgie Lavelle, who was also playing Nemesis Claw. So 
I felt like I had all the like the, the all the knowledge in the world because I knew exactly what his team did, and we were playing on lock again that I just played on two rounds ago, and so I knew exactly how it was going to go. So I went in with the kind of practiced confidence, um, and I knew what he and he was trying all the same sort of tricks that I was trying. Including, like, even trying to do things that I found out in earlier games that I couldn't do, like try and use the ventriloquist through a wall to move people off points, which you can't do because you can't measure through the wall even when it doesn't need line of sight, which is something I'd forgotten and tried to do to my opponent in a previous game. And so it was a whole thing where I was just completely locked in on what was going on. So, despite that, we were probably about equal skill level and we had uh, the same team. I managed to get a win uh, 17 to 15. So I ended up with three wins, a draw, and two losses, which I was really, really chuffed with, actually. I thought I was a really, had a really nice time. And I thought I was doing really, really well. So let's have a little gander at the final uh, the final placings. Uh, let me get my laser laser pointer out here. Oh, laser pointer, there it is. So, um, obviously, uh, John from Wales, John Reese, can you roll a crit? Won, first place. Uh Got and completely undefeated. Um, well done. Um, John, like, don't get me wrong, he deserved the win. But he was one of the only people there that I would say was, like, the sort of pseudo-celebrity um, top, like, top pro players. that you, the, the, One of the names that you really look out for. Like, he was the big bogey. Everyone was sitting judge, in, in Bugman's going, I don't want to draw John Reese. I'm just going to get stomped. Because I think a lot of the other like players of his like a lot of his peers in terms of their notoriety more than anything else were at WTC. Uh, so whether that was uh, Ryan Ryan Slater, the, the Spanish guys, uh, the Polish guys, people who would previously have come over to Warhammer World for different things were at WCC. So he was like the if you like he was the biggest fish on in in there, um, and it. <laughs> It would have been high drama if somebody had actually managed to take a loss um, off him, um, you know, or take one of his wins away. But no, he, he did steamroll to the top. He'd be a very, very good kill team player. Do you know, say what you want about his content or his videos. He absolutely has the right to have the opinions that he has and say the things that he has because he does bring it and show it every time he goes to an event. So you got to respect that. You've got to respect that. You've got to respect that. Second place was uh, Jonathan Solly, right? So um, again... He did really, really well. Uh, he he came best overall and therefore also got a golden ticket, right? Because he took one loss to John Reese, right? Um, all his other games were wins. He was a wonderful chap, really sporting, really friendly, really accommodating. And his army was just clearly, in everybody's opinion, the best thing painted in the room. Everybody, I suppose, who... So, he, you know, he ended up... Like, because we were sitting there going... Um, uh, go through the awards and uh mr solly got like he got the second place award for best general having already scooped the first place painting and the judge's choice painting right and so at this point <laughs> uh chris scott just turns around to me and goes oh so he's he's he's, he's got best overall i'm like yeah like everybody else you could see it coming except for him because i was watching his face and it was totally surprised when he was told he was the best overall even though mathematically if you came second and you came top on hobby then you're going to be best overall, right? Um, there you go. So, well done to the two golden ticket winners. Uh, and then in third place, we got uh, Commandos. Uh, fourth place, Felgar Ravagers. Uh, fifth place, Legionaries. Sixth place was Mandrakes. Seventh place was Hunter Clade. Eighth was the Phobos Strike Team. Ninth was Scouts. Tenth was Nemesis Claw. Eleventh... Um, uh, Chris got blood, bloodied, right? And that's so top eleven. Um, no duplicate teams, right? So then you get to twelve. Mike Sherwood with the second Felgo Ravagers team, thirteen, and Mike Dawn with the third Felgo Ravagers team. Fourteenth, there's me with Nemesis Claw. Um, really pleased actually to be at four. You know, fourteenth out of thirty-eight. Really good score for me, considering I've previously come to these things and been last. I was really pleased. Um, then we got some scouts. Charles Shep. Now, this is an interesting one. Charles usually does really, really well. Um, 
the Charles is the other half, if you like, who can you roll a crit, like he's his friend and his like sparring partner in all his battle reports. But Charles always, 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 always plays vet guard. And so this was for the first time, I think he was playing a different team, uh, a tournament, he had scouts, and you can see where like lost, 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 women win. So clearly he had to like lock in with how they played, and then he locked in and managed to get the three wins. Um, which, you know, makes you wonder if you've seen my rumours video about like Vet Guard going to, to Legends. Makes you wonder if, if, if Mr. Crit has shared with his good friend Charles some inside information there about um certain teams not being particularly viable in years to come and certain other teams that might remain viable for a good number of years just a thought people who watch the rumors um and we got void dance troop uh oh john bellamy with talons of the emperor so mrs ti uh helen had to play into john's uh talent just people like yeah he went three and three people don't know what to do or a lot of people just don't know what to do with talent of the emperor still right and they're a compendium team here you are three years in he's gone three and three with them um jaegers that's pretty cool brew brothers uh my my wife uh helen uh on leader is 20 obviously she always beats me when we play right but i came 14th and she came 21st uh, then we got Lotion, and then my other friend Ben, that's uh, a Roboros from the Discord, again, always beats me when we play, or feels that way anyway, but again, 23rd, so I don't want to ask about, uh, Paolo there, uh, with Intercession, then we got Hearthkin, another set of Nemesis Claw, some Death Guard, some more Death Guard, Vet Guard, Hand of the Archon, Intercessors, Intercessors, Legionaries, Legionaries, Commandos, Mandrakes, Hearthkin, and another Nemesis Claw. So really interesting. I think Nemesis Claw pretty highly represented, right? But a very elite field overall, which 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 suits me. I like elite teams. I like finishing games with an hour to spare. That's good. It's a stress free environment. Uh, okay. So let's talk about my personal growth as a player. I haven't actually gone back and checked all my tournament dates. I could do, but I feel like this is my best ever tournament performance. Uh, five out of six games were really close and exciting and the one that wasn't close i i won by landslide so i didn't take a single stomp now part of that is the look of the draw absolutely i managed to play a lot of elite teams right and i managed to miss those big well it was only really john reese right but i managed to miss the big beast that was clearly gonna stomp me into the floor um I feel like I'm finally hitting my stride with the game, which is why I've put the Palpatine quote down the bottom there, because as we know, this edition of the game's going bye-bye, <laughs> and we're getting a new edition. Hopefully they haven't changed that much, they're not going to change that much. Now, I should say, I'm recording this before the reveal stream at 4pm on Saturday the 17th, but you're watching it after the reveal stream, so... Maybe we all know more now about the next edition and what's changing and what's not. Maybe we don't. I don't know. But I thought I'd just throw that out there. Um, getting a hobby trophy feels further away, mind you. Like, my hobby's improved, but so has the hobby of the Kill Team community is improved around it. So I always seem, you know, I, I think I'm probably in the top 10 or 15 of hobby hobby people, but I'm nowhere near the nowhere near the top. That, that, that Empress Children Kill Team's blown my mind about what, like the standard of hobby can be in a gaming event like because i could see that being entered in a in an honest to goodness painting event right i'll be taking my night lords to the wuhan world critical ops event on the 29th of august so my first time going to one of their weekday warhammer events because it's in the school holidays so i can go right because i'm not working because i'm a teacher so that's nice um <laughs> so i'm doing that as a day trip doesn't start till 10 a.m so you know Get out of Colchester at 6 o'clock in the morning. Get down to Nottingham, up to Nottingham, geography, do the event. If you're there and you're a friend of the channel and, and you see me on that day, uh, the gift of coffee might be uh, fondly appreciated. But yeah, I'm going to attempt to do that one as a day trip if you're available. It's only some tickets have gone back on sale for that one, I think. Some people have returned theirs. Uh, it's only 20 quid ago, so maybe uh, worth, worth a look. Um... And then, of course, after the video I put out, I couldn't not. I'm going to the Turning Point Tactics event on September the 5th and 6th as well. And that'll be with the Night Lords again, right? And that probably is going to be the last tournament of the edition. 
I'm estimating that'll be like two weeks until the new edition comes out. Um, so yeah, but it should be a really good, like I said in that video where I was trying to promote them a little bit, should be a really good like uh, farewell feast for this game that we've loved for three years. Uh, really, 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 really nice. Um, so I really look forward to both of those events actually. Right, final thoughts. Um, were you there? Uh, were you one of my opponents? Have I misremembered something? I didn't actually manage to take photographs of all the maps, so it could be that for some of the games, I've misremembered the maps we we're playing on. But uh, there we go. Uh, I hope to see you at a future event. Um, I everybody that I ran into at that event was lovely, wonderful people. Uh, do subscribe, like, consider joining the Discord. Very helpful. Um, join me for my live hobby stream on Wednesday. I think the plan is that this is going live on Tuesday, so that'll be the hobby stream tomorrow. But in case it hasn't, there's a hobby stream on Wednesday. And I want to say a big thank you to all my channel members. And of course, don't forget that we're still doing, until the end of August, the votes for the current hobby challenge, which is where you get to, if you're a channel member, you get to tell me what I should paint next. Um, and then I get to tell you what you should paint next. And then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a good one. Um, and I've got about 29 minutes until the... Um, the stream the kill team reveal stream which i've got a live blog and then do a video for that i'm really churning out today but you in the future are watching this on tuesday so you already know everything that we're going to discover next <laughs> have a great one see ya bye 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 bye